Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, as you guys know, I just got back from Wheeler Lake in Alabama, um, which is part of the TVA chain. We just fished the Bassmaster Open uh, out there and had an okay tournament. It wasn't good. It wasn't bad. It was. Uh, we ended up finishing 67th out of 221, so not terrible as far as a percentage of the field, but we didn't get a check. But we did move up in points. We got like six, six uh, moved up six spots. Um, but overall, it was a very, very difficult tournament. There, it was a challenge in that event, uh, especially from the standpoint of, of fishing pressure. There was so many people um, fishing the same areas uh, in this event. In fact, I don't, I can't remember a tournament where uh, a, a fishery uh, fished so small. Um, in recent memory. I mean, I thought Chickamauga was bad. Chickamauga, you put 200 and something boats on Lake Chickamauga, uh, it feels really, really small and very few people can get on, on the areas that they intend to get on uh, just by way of, of bad boat draws or bad rotations. But at least Chickamauga, you can find other auxiliary patterns, you know, shoreline patterns or, or you know, doing different things from top to bottom most of the time. But Lake Wheeler, it was like a six mile stretch of the lake was, was the, where the entire field camped out the entire time. So it was like every single spot I went to, there was already somebody that had just gone through or is fishing it and I, I you know, uh, or is, is coming to it. You know, it, it, it was just insane how difficult it was to like make decisions on where to fish next because there was just pressure everywhere. It was, it was really, really hard. And it wasn't like you could just fish anywhere and, and get bit. There were, the fish were in very defined little areas um, that made it very difficult to like just go with the flow and, and wing it, you know? So that made it a challenge. But the reason why I wanted to do this video is because the topic of ethics came up from this event so many times. A lot, the, the term poacher was thrown out there a lot. And, you know, a lot of people got in arguments and it was very heated. You heard a lot of guys talk about, you know, guys moving in on them uh, at the, on the weigh-in stage and, and, uh, and all that. You know, so there's all kinds of stories that, that came from uh, this event. And I think a lot of them were very avoidable. Some of them, you know, I, I don't think were, uh, I, I don't think that, that the person that was accused of being in the wrong was necessarily in the wrong. There's a, there's a lot of different scenarios, but I feel like it's, it's worth doing a video like this to kind of talk about, you know, where we are in the sport and like how to approach um, ethics, you know, out there on the water, how to approach these situations where you've got a lake that fishes very, very small, like Chickamauga, like Wheeler, um, even, you know, Gunnersville stretches out, but, but there's a lot of lakes on the TVA that, that fish a little bit smaller nowadays be, because of a couple of reasons. Number one, technology is so good nowadays. The mapping's really good. You got forward-facing sonar. The sonar technologies in general make it very, very easy for people to find the things that only a select few people who did the work could find in the past. So, and also people have been observant. They've seen people be fishing, uh, you know, on these these spots for a long time, and then they check them. You know, it's it's. I don't think that I, I don't. I, I don't know if that's right, but but that's just a fact. You know, people uh, are, are notice people fishing and catching fish on spots, and they go in and they check it eventually. But anyways, um, so you've got technology is increasing, and you've got more people on the water. You know, since COVID started, more and more people have been on the water. Lake Chickamauga is kind of on the downswing right now because there's been so much fishing pressure. People are out more on the weekdays than they are on the weekends nowadays. It's it's crazy. It's it's kind of done like a little bit of a flip flop. And I think that that's a big reason why you're seeing more and more people fish offshore in conjunction with that 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 increase in technology. Um, so it's becoming more and more of an issue and more and more of a challenge. Yesterday I was out on Chickamauga with a couple friends and I was amazed that we could actually get on. We actually got on multiple community spots and we had like a 40 fish day. It was awesome. It, we had a, a great time, but it was incredible. I couldn't believe it. Even with the big bass tour fishing out here, we were able to 
able to get on a bunch of spots. First time in a while that I've been able to do that, but it is kind of early in the season and guys are still kind of fishing shallow. But, um, but anyways, so let's, let's discuss ethics and, and these are just my opinions. I'm not the, the world's authority on, you know, fishing ethics. You know, I make mistakes out there on the water and my perception of what like I'm willing to deal with and, and, you know, uh, how I want to be treated on the water is different than other people. You know, like some people, they don't have any patience at all. If they get to a spot, they think it's their spot for the, the entire day or the entire tournament. Um, and for me, you know, uh, personally, if it's a community spot, there's plenty of fish. I'd rather work with somebody. I'd rather wave them in, just say, Hey, listen, it's better if you're right next to me and we're making a, the same cast than it is, you know, that you, you trying to fish around and, and move this school around, like let's work together. So it, everybody's perception is a little bit different, which I think is something that a lot of people forget is that, that most people want to be treated as they, or treat people as they want to be treated. Um, but that's a sliding scale. It's, it's very different from person to person on, on what their tolerance is and how they want to be treated. So, uh, and from my perspective, you know, coming from the pro circuit, uh, we kind of had a different uh, approach to, to these, these tournaments where everybody's fishing on top of each other. I feel like most people on the pro circuit who are really just trying to make a living, like we, we all work together a little bit more um, than, than a lot of the, you know, the other maybe semi-pro tournaments that I've seen because, um, you know, we understand like we're, we're going to have to fish together on some of these areas. We're finding the same spots. And so I've had plenty of situations where I've worked together with somebody, whether I was the first boat there or the second boat there. Um, you know, I, I would wave people in, they would wave me in it, you know, it, it didn't always happen like that. And it shouldn't always happen like that, depending on the scenario. But, um, it seemed like we worked together a little bit more. Um, but, uh, but anyways, uh, the, the first thing I kind of want to discuss is um, kind of, you know, the term poacher was thrown around a lot at this event. And so I kind of want to define that first, and then we can kind of dive into, um, you know, uh, communication, which I think is kind of the biggest part of, of ethics on the water nowadays, and kind of making sure that you don't fall into a situation where you start getting a bad rep reputation on the water. Um, so like uh, the term poacher got th threw out quite a bit uh, by a bunch of people at the, the tournament and, and some rightly so like, um, I'm sure that there was plenty of guys that moved in on guys that, that they didn't move in there because they knew the fish were there and it was already a spot that they had in their milk run or their game plan. But just because somebody was catching fish there, they moved there. So, um, that to me is a poacher, somebody that, that, that doesn't know a spot exists, that, that they don't have any waypoints there. They didn't practice there. They didn't, they, they, uh, had no intention on fishing it before the tournament, before finding out that there's fish there, but because somebody's doing well there, they move in. To me, that's poacher. If somebody it just simply wants to join you fishing a spot because they know what's there, they did the work, they did the the homework and the legwork to find the, those fish, um, but they just happen to be second or third there um, because of their boat draw. That's not a poacher to me. Um, you know, that we're to me that's that's far from being a poacher. Um, but anyways, um, the first. The second topic I want to talk about is is um, communication. Communication is is about respect out on the water, and respect is a, it goes a long, long way. I see a lot of guys that that even though uh, to me they they may have a right to to try to fish a spot that already has somebody on it. Um, they do it the wrong way, and and to me, they kind of eliminate or erase their their uh, their right to fish there. Like they lose their their argument because um, they didn't communicate. They didn't show the proper respect in tournament fishing. I I personally, uh, I know a lot of people think that if somebody is able to get a good boat draw and they get to a spot first, it's a community hole or or you know it's a spot that that 
you know, other people wanted to start that just because they got lucky and they got that good boat draw and they get to that spot first, that it's theirs for the day or the week and they can do with it what they want and nobody else has the right to fish there. I disagree very strongly under most circumstances. The difference is, you know, if you if, if it's a one cast deal, you know, and, and really it can't handle two boats without uh, both anglers really um, having less of an opportunity then then yeah I mean you know people probably shouldn't be going in on those 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 sort of people but if it's a spot that has a lot of fish and uh, and you know it's a community hole or or both of you found it legitimately through hard work um, I think both of you should have the right to be able to fish a spot however it's the responsibility of the second, person, second or third person, the subsequent anglers to communicate and to ask permission from the other anglers. That's, I, I, I honestly feel that that is, that is the case because, um, it shows respect for the other angler. And to be honest, most anglers will be willing to, you know, if it's a, if it's a, if it's a spot that does have ample opportunity for both anglers to do well, most anglers will want to work with somebody that is respectful and willing to communicate and willing to work with them uh, on a on a spot than constantly being on edge about like I gotta keep this guy out you know or uh, how am I gonna get here the next day somebody gonna beat me to my spot more pe in my experience especially you know in my case I would rather work with somebody and try to outfish them, you know, on that spot, you know, secretly outfish them on that spot, then, um, then trying to, to keep them off. Because I know that my boat is not going to go fast enough to beat them there the second day, you know, if they have a better boat draw, like they're going to be able to get on there. So if I'm stingy with the spot, um, it, you know, I'm probably going to lose it the next day. And then it's not good for anybody. And I've done this multiple times to great success. Uh, I've had great top 10 finishes because I allowed people to, to come in on a spot that I was already fishing because they found the spot too. Um, and, uh, but anyways, communication is, is a big key and it is your responsibility as the subsequent angler for that first line of communication. And so the best way that I've found, and I've talked to peers about this, you know, I've talked to a lot of anglers at, at before the first day of blast off because I knew that was going to be a big issue. Uh, for this event. And I, I asked them like, how would you approach this? You know, I had, I had one spot that, that was kind of a shell bar current deal that had uh, a spawning shad on it. And uh, I knew that I was probably going to be sharing it with somebody. So um, I was just trying to get an idea, you know, just kind of spitball and see what, what other people felt. And we all agreed the best way to, to handle it is to, to ask permission. And really the best way to do it is to not do it aggressively. You never want to, uh, to uh, disturb the area either. So uh, what I suggest is you, you come off pad at a good distance, put the trolling motor down, trolling motor up slowly to, the, to get close enough to be able to have a conversation with this person without like screaming or yelling or, or, you know, especially yelling over wind or something like that. Like you need to be able to have a, a, a conversation where you're far enough away that you're not hurting anything, but you don't have to like, there's no chance of a miscommunication, you know, and no, nobody's getting their, their, uh, getting on edge. Um, so don't pick up a rod. Also, that's another big key. Like you don't want to like automatically assume that you're going to be fishing there. So, so don't pick up a rod, but go up and just, exp you know, explain the situation. Just be like, Hey, um, you know, my name is Miles Berghoff. Uh, I, uh, I mean, you can or can't, you can say your name if you want. Uh, my name's on my boat. Most people recognize the Jersey or whatever, but, um, but you know, say, Hey, uh, I found this spot too. Uh, you know, this, this was, this is my, my intended starting area. You know, I've, this is really all I've got. Um, I know it's big enough for both of us, uh, to fish here. I know what's here. Uh, and, and I've got a better boat draw tomorrow. I tend on being here tomorrow. Would you mind working together on this spot to, to fish? 
you, you just tell me exactly where you want to fish, what cast you want to make, and I'll work around you. Okay. And, you know, usually that talking point, that, that conversation, that initial conversation really lowers, you know, people's anxiety, lowers the walls and really de-escalates any sort of disagreement that might've been bubbling up, you know, in somebody. Cause you know, people are used to like people just coming in and expecting to fish without saying anything. And that is the wrong way to approach, uh, you know, a situation where you're fishing multiple people. Um, and, uh, and so you just communicating, being respectful, showing that respect for another angler is a really, really good way to ensure that, that, you, you both can have a good day. You can start off on the right, the, the right foot, regardless of your boat draw. And uh, so that's to me the right way to respond uh, or the, the right way to communicate. And then, you know, it's also your responsibility to, to um, follow through with what the answer is. If they say, nah, just rather fish this spot myself, you say, okay, um, I, I just wanna let you know, I will be here tomorrow first thing. Uh, I do intend on starting here the, the next day. To me, that's fair. To me, that is very fair. There's a reason why we have boat draws um, that flip-flop is because it's it's recognized that it's, it's not exactly equal, you know, as far as the opportunities for the, the, the starting spots. And, re, you know, a lot of people think, well, he got there first, you know, the first day, like it's his spot. That's just not how it works nowadays with, with uh, most of these areas. Yes, if you're a poacher, if you don't know what's there and you're, you've got nothing going on and the only reason you go there is because there's an angler that you respect there that, that you, know, you know is on something and, the, and you're going there just because you know, he's there, that's wrong and you shouldn't be doing that. But um, anyways... So being respectful, opening a line of communication, those are big keys. Um, and, uh, and man, uh, let me tell you, it really does lower, lower people's, you know, uh, anxiety a lot out there on the water. And, you know, you both end up fishing better. You know, if you, if you're both respectful of each other, you both fish better. There's nothing worse than like, getting in an argument with somebody and then not being able to fish good for the rest of the day because you're pissed. You're, you're constantly like, well, gosh, that guy was, you know, totally unreasonable or whatever the scenario. Another thing that, that is really important and it's also a sign of respect is being introspective and recognizing when you've made a mistake, maybe a bad judgment call. I've made plenty of bad judgment calls on the water, but I guarantee I'm the first person to, to apologize if I think that I, I did something wrong. Um, you know, it, it's, it's hard. Like even this, the, during practice last week, I ended up, um, you know, stopping on a spot, a buddy of mine, I didn't know who it was at first, but, um, it, you know, they were idling this, this, the head of this island. And, and I was like, I was like, oh gosh, well, they look far enough away. Well, I pull up and idle for a second. I was like, I realized it's like, man, he's a little bit too close. Like uh, I need to go. So I just took off, you know, and then I, I called him up later. I was like, Hey, sorry, man. I didn't mean to, to cut you off there. Just kind of a, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of judged the distance a little bit off and, and, uh, anyways, so, and it's okay. Like people make mistakes all the time. In fact, during the, the tournament, I, uh, my starting location, same kind of scenario, starting location, a guy, uh, stopped on it, like right before me, like he was like a few hundred yards ahead of me. Um, so just a, a few boats ahead of me and, and, and the blast off and he gets there first and, uh, and you know, the scenario was like, if, if he had stopped there to fish the same spot that I wanted to fish, like the same exact scenario, which was like the shell bed with, with shad spawning on it, then, um, we would have had a communication, no doubt. Like I would have been like the first one to, to open up that line of communication. I had already come up with my spiel and how I was going to approach the situation. But he, he gets there, he sets down, he's kind of like on top of the bar casting over the main river channel or into the main river channel drop uh, onto like a tree, I guess is what he was saying. He was fishing, but he never even looked back towards me when, when I sat down. Um, and, uh, and so I just assumed that he didn't 
cared that I was there and he was fishing something completely different. So uh, I slid in and, and fished my point. His back is to me the entire time. And then I end up catching my limit and uh, very quickly, like six casts. And, uh, and then he kind of got a little bit aggravated because, you know, we're within two or three uh, long casts uh, apart from each other. He is definitely fishing a completely different cast, like making a completely different cast pointed a different direction uh, than I, I am. I'm like casting over here. He's cast, got his back to me casting this way. So to me, uh, like I, I didn't open that communication because of that reason. It was just like, well, he's in his own world over there doing his own thing. But because, you know, when somebody catches a limit behind you, um, sometimes you get a little bit aggravated. So he turned around we had a conversation at first. It was a little bit heated. I'll, I'll be honest. Like uh, he, he, he was, you know, he was a little bit flustered. He felt like I was trying to take an area from him. And, and, uh, you know, I, I felt bad at that point because I didn't open the line of communication. But at that point we talked about it. We de-escalated, you know, the situation. And honestly, it was a super nice experience after that. Like we were both really nice. That gentleman was was super nice, super generous, and uh, and you know he was he was super willing to to share this general area with me. No problem. I never once pushed him to you know and and you know like affected his his brush pile or his tree that he was fishing. And I even welcomed him over to like position right next to me to to catch a limit off of this uh, shell bed that I'm I'm catching him on, and uh, and you know what I even came back later in the day he had uh, I came back twice actually the second time there was like four boats with him, and then um, the the third time I came back I, I didn't stop and fish that second time but the third time I came back. Uh, I was just like, hey, do you mind if I uh, join you again? And he's like, absolutely. You just come in, you know, wherever. And I even talked to him in the parking lot. And I did apologize for not talking to him earlier. That was my bad. Um, you know, I I analyzed the situation a little bit differently because I thought that he was fishing something completely different. I didn't think that it even warranted really discussing. But it was probably would have been in good taste just to just go ahead and uh, uh discuss it first thing but it just goes to show you like we all make mistakes i think the majority the vast majority of anglers out there want to be respectful of other people uh, i i think that a lot of people just get stuck in in a uh you know a trap of where you know they're afraid of asking questions because they're afraid of hearing uh you know the the answer you know getting an answer that they, they don't want like no you can't fish here with me um, but I think it's really important to, to do that, but you also have to, you know, if you make a mistake, just apologize, man. It's so easy. It's so easy to show that respect for somebody out on the water. And it goes such a long ways. I had a, uh, uh, instance on Sam Rayburn a few years ago, actually my rookie season on, on a tour, um, where I was coming into the dock and, uh, and at that point we had high water. So like the ramp, there was like no dock, um, to, to dock on. There was like this one of these two little spots on the side of the ramp for you to be able to pull your, your boat onto the sand to, to beach. So you could go get your truck and then you know, put your boat on the trailer. And as I'm pulling up, you know, there's a bunch of guys out here floating around, and then there's two boats in those two spots. And I'm, I'm like, I thought that these guys out here, you know, uh, at least most of them were, were, you had like, you know, observers with them that are going to get their truck. A lot of them did. Um, and so they were just waiting, but, uh, but in reality, one of them was waiting for a spot to open up on the shoreline. When a spot did open up, I'm like, oh, lucky me, you know, and I go in there and I'm about to go in and all of a sudden somebody starts yelling at me from behind and, uh, and I'm like, I'm like, oh shoot, I'm so sorry. Uh, you know, I was just like, I, I didn't mean anything by it. And, and, uh, you know, apologize instead of barking back. Cause I think that, that a lot of people like to just, uh, you know, uh, respond with aggression as well. But I was just like, uh, dude, I'm so sorry, man. I, you know, I didn't mean anything by it. I, I just didn't understand what was going on. And did, you know, when we met in the parking lot, I shook his hand and I apologized again and we were cool. Everything was good. 
Guess what happened the first day of the tournament? Get to my spot in mega school. Um, and, uh, and when I get there, I'm the first guy there. I pull up, start catching fish like crazy. It's awesome. And then here comes another angler in the, in, in this like Creek that I was in and it's him, you know, and, and, uh, the guy that I had that little, uh, you know, argument, it wasn't an argument, but a disagreement with, uh, the day before that I deescalated and, and, you know, we, we showed respect for each other. Uh, it, it, by the end, um, he comes in. Now we both found the same spot, and if if I had just been like, well, you know, just go kick rocks, you know, the the day before, if I if I returned his his um, you know anger with aggression, um, it may be a situation where where uh, you know he he would beat me there to that spot the next day instead. Because we had that that respectful situation happen uh, by the end of that uh, the the day prior, we worked together on that spot. We both got to uh, cash in on that spot. I ended up getting a top twelve out of that that tournament, and it was all because of the actions that I uh, that I uh, I did de escalating that situation in practice. And uh, anyways, I I don't know. I I I'd like to do things. A little bit differently. I don't fish very good if I've, I get in an argument with somebody, and you know what? It, sometimes you just gotta concede a little bit. And but I mean it. It goes a long ways, man. It, it really does when you uh, you show people respect and you communicate with them. It goes a long, long way. And you never know what opportunities you will have because of um, you know showing them respect and communicate with them, and vice versa. But anyways, guys, um, I know I've rambled on a, a lot, and I know that a lot of people are going to have differing opinions on, you know, whether or not you should actually ever uh, come in and fish with somebody, or even request to to fish with somebody. Um, and I do want to hear your opinions on on uh, you know what you think is is appropriate or correct or ethical. I will close it on this note though, um, because I think that there's a big difference between tournament anglers and and fun fishermen and and the worlds kind of collide out there on the water sometimes um, my personal opinion is as tournament anglers we are responsible for you know the the uh, you know the public's view of the sport and um you know though there are certain things you know being able to fish with with other tournament anglers that you know we have an understanding amongst ourselves that understanding may not translate to to anglers that are fun fishing out there, just out there to have a good time. Um, so don't be pushy. Don't push them around. It's not you're not king of the lake. Um, you know, just because you paid an entry fee and you're out there trying to make a living, it's not your right to push somebody off of a spot. Um, you know, you have to show them even more respect and courtesy than other tournament anglers in my book. So just another thought. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, trust the process, and I'll see you out on the water. Hopefully not on my spot.